When I say mud dragon, people will have different imagination. Some would think of worms from various mythology. Some would think of these creatures from Yu-Gi-Oh! Some might even think of Tong Tian Long fossil from 9 years ago. However, those are not what I'll be talking about in this video. The mud dragons that I will talk about are real and still live in our world right now. So, let me bring up the question. What exactly is mud dragon? While it is commonly called mud dragon, mud dragon is not a dragon. I mean, yes, of course, what am I even saying? Mud dragons are their own villain. Kinorinka basically means moving snout. Mud dragons are somewhat related to worms. To be precise, they are the sister taxa of Priapulida, the penis worm. Yes, that is the name of those animals. I'm not making a joke. Anyway, this film is divided into two classes, Alomaloragida and Kikloragida, or you could simply pronounce it Cycloragida if that's easier for you. This classification is largely based on molecular evidence, but also morphological synapomorphies, which I'll talk about in the morphology section. There are over 200 species of mud dragons. Mud dragons are marine benthic animals. Benthic means they live in the bottom of a water body. They are quite literally cosmopolitan, meaning they can be found pretty much everywhere, in this case, in every ocean. And they are not exclusive to the deep sea either. They can be found on shallow water of 8 meters depth. However, some of them do live in deeper water, up to 8,000 meters. They can also be found in some brackish environment. So, why are they not commonly known if they are cosmopolitan? Well, that's because they are small. They are mostly categorized as meiobenthic animals. That means benthic animals that are not big enough but also not microscopic. Basically in between. Hence meio. Neither macro nor micro. Next, let's talk about their morphology. Like I said earlier, they are small. Typically only half millimeter. But some can reach one millimeter. Yes, millimeter. MM. That's why not a lot of people are aware of their existence. This is not always the case though. They were once bigger, but that's half a billion years ago. I'll talk about that later. In general, mud dragon's body can be divided into three parts. The anterior is called introvert, which is their aversible head. Yes, you heard that right, introvert. The head has protrusible mouth cone, which is simply called oral cone. Behind this oral cone are several rings of spines, which are called scolids or scalids. Behind their head is their neck. The rest of their body, which consists of 11 segments, is their trunk. So, there are 13 segments in total. Oh, by the way, their segments are also known as zonids or zonites. These segments or zonites are covered with plates called placid. The dorsal placids are called tergal plates, aka tergite, and the ventral placids are called sternal plates, aka sternite, basically the same terms used for many arthropods. These placids are composed of chitinous basal layer and epicuticula, aka epicuticle. These give them a rigid exoskeleton with enough articulation to be somewhat flexible. They have some spicules or spines on their trunk. Most of them also have terminal spicules or spines on their posterior. Some species are sexually dimorphic, in which the males have several penile spines, while females only have lateral terminal accessory spines. Now, about the difference between the two class. Alomaloragida have bilateral symmetrical neck and closing apparatus, while Kikloragida have radial symmetrical neck and closing apparatus. And that's basically it, as far as we've discovered at least. However, like I said earlier, this is supported by molecular evidence, so the validity of this phylogeny is quite robust. Next, let's talk about their lifestyle and behavior. But before that, mud dragons can mostly be found in sediments. They move around by averting their head, hence their name. Kinorinka, moving snout, or moving with snout. The scalids from their head serves as anchors to drag their body forward as they move their head in and out. Their head have extensive circular muscles, 
while their trunk doesn't. They most likely eat diatoms, or microorganisms, or perhaps organic materials in the sediment. I say it most likely because there is no extensive research on their diet. Their digestive tracts are relatively straight and simple though, so they most likely don't have an exceptionally unique way of digestion. They do have nervous system, with a ventral nerve cord along their body, and a neuropil ring in front of their pharynx. The spines or spicules on their body serves as sensory organs. This includes their scalids. Some species have ocelli on their head, or at least a structure that resembles ocelli. If those are indeed ocelli, then it should function as visual sensory organ. But there is not enough research on this, so take it with a grain of salt. We also don't have a holistic knowledge on their reproduction yet. What we know is, they reproduce sexually and most likely have internal fertilization. Some hypothesize that males will inject spermatophores into the females. In some species, males have these medial tubes which could potentially help in fertilization. However, as I said, this is just a hypothesis for now. No conclusive answer yet, because there is no evidence. Some records of their development had been published back in the 1990s, or even earlier. There are six juvenile stages. When juveniles emerge from the eggs, their trunk only have nine segments. The last two segments develop as they mature through their life stages. Their scalids also grow and develop as they mature. Unfortunately, no image is available, and this is only based on several species, which means a lot more variants might exist. The discovery of mud dragon fossil, or at the very least, Mud dragon-like fossil was quite phenomenal back in 2015. The fossil was named Eokinorhynchus rarus. Eo means dawn, and rarus means rare, so it basically means rare early kinorhynch. The presence of introvert with prominent scalids showed the fact that they are scalidophorans, that is, the clade unifying kinorhynchia and priapulida. Well, Lodicifera was generally classified in this clade too, but they are not considered closely related based on the analysis in most recent publications. Their trunk also has spines, which is similar to the extant mud dragons. However, Eukinorhynchus rarus have a trunk with 20, or even more segments, in contrast to the 11 segments found in the extant mud dragons. Besides that, they are larger. They could reach 4 cm long, which is not that big of course, but it is significantly bigger than extant mud dragons, which only grow up to 1 mm. Think about it, that's 40 times bigger. Having a nice fossil of a relatively obscure taxon is still groundbreaking. We do have many fossils of Scalidophorans, including the relatively famous Otoya from the Burgess Shale, but we don't have much specimens of Kinorhynch. In fact, as far as I know, this is the only Kinorhynch fossil that we have. Do correct me if I'm wrong though. Still, this discovery showed that Scalidophorans had diverged back in Cambrian. As you can see and hear in this video, we still don't know that much about them. There are several hypotheses that still need to be proven. There are various questions that still need to be answered. And of course, because we don't have that much extensive observation on them, there could potentially be several shocking facts that we couldn't even think of. Let's hope we'll discover a lot more, or who knows? If you are interested enough, maybe you'll be the one who'll discover it in the future. But for now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now. Oh, by the way, I will be quite busy until early March, which means I won't be able to read comments. If you got any question or discussion, I would suggest joining our Discord server and ask them. Anyway, enjoy your day.